What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Reese1K, and I'm bringing y'all a video on how good you have to be to play Division Three basketball in college. Now, you want to bounce. You want to bounce. You got this. This is not a paid partnership by Sour Patch. I don't know why I did that. But, okay. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Coming out of high school, I had almost every single Division Three look in this area that I can think of. There wasn't a single D3 I don't think I couldn't have gone to. And I'm not saying that to sound cocky or anything like that, but like that's just what it was. And I did, I'm not the kind of guy, I wasn't highly recruited. I was a zero star. I had no... Um, major division one looks or like fresh out of high school i didn't have any d1 looks actually at all so yeah i don't know that was that that wasn't in the cards for me high school basketball the basketball culture as a whole is very very toxic in the sense where you're growing up thinking oh it's d1 or nothing it's d1 or my career means nothing if i don't go division one like that is far from the truth and it's also far from the truth when, you know, people think that Division Three basketball players can't hoop. And that's just not the case at all. There's some D3 players that are dogs and that will destroy Division One players. I'm starting to you guys have seen players that are really good out there that can really play. And they might have been Division Three, and they might have been D1. It doesn't really matter. But for me personally, what got me Division Three looks was playing AAU. I played AAU and uh, I played in the big tournaments like Hoop Group. Uh, we went to Boo Williams in Virginia, Spooky Nuke, that's um, the Jam Fest, Pittsburgh Jam Fest. For those that are watching this video and that play AAU, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So when you're in those tournaments, D3 is galore. They're there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to see D3s all over the place. And you're going to see some D1s too. You might see some D2s. You might see some D2s. D2 is a little iffy. You don't really see too many of those uh, around, but you see D3 is galore. I'm not going to lie to you. Every single D3 coach in that area is normally at those tournaments, right? And before those tournaments, what you should be doing is reaching out to these coaches. You should be hitting them up through email like, yo, my name is so-and-so and I want to um, let you know I'm going to be playing in this tournament. My team is this, my jersey number is this, my height, weight. All that. Give them all your information. Give them your number. Even if they don't respond, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you got to swing. If you don't swing, you'll never know if you're going to make or miss it. So doing that, just being proactive as a whole is really helpful for your deep career. For me personally, I didn't really do too much of that from my experience in high school. I had a coach, you know, my AAU coach kind of did that for me a little bit with some schools, but once you get one school on you, the next thing you know, you have like two to three more schools trying to look at you like, damn, why is this coach so interested in this player? What does he bring to the table? And that's what it turned into for me. Like once I had a one division three offer and once it was posted online, you know, they say, oh, blessed to receive an offer from so, so, so. By the way, kids are embarrassed to do that for D3 schools and that's really dumb to me okay and offers an offer playing college basketball is a blessing you know what i mean you're one out of i don't know how many kids get an opportunity to play college at all so you get an offer division one two or three be grateful for it because you might not ever get that offer there's a bunch of kids that don't have that opportunity but for me it was more so um you get that offer you get that first division three offer or first offer from any division the next thing you know, you have coaches lined up trying to see what this kid brings to the table. And now you're going to have more coaches coming to your game. And then they're going to offer you two. You know what I mean? You get one offer, that turns into two to three. Next thing you know, you get four to five. And it comes quick. Like one tournament, I think I ended up with eight offers off of that one tournament that we had in New York. And it was just a bunch of different schools saying, oh, yeah, we have a spot for you. You can come play. Now, the thing is about coaches, from my, from my experience... None of them necessarily guaranteed me anything except for maybe one coach. The one coach um, out of New York that told me, yo, you come to this school, you're going to start. You're, you're going to be a guard. We're going to play through you. We're going to do this, that, and the third. Yeah, a lot of coaches didn't really lead with that. They just tell you you're a good player, and they just say, 
you know, we can use you at our school and hopefully, you know, you decide to come here, take you on a visit, come play against our guys, see how you compete. And yeah, but I could be, th this is my experience that I'm telling y'all. This isn't how it goes for everybody. I don't know what they tell everybody else. They might tell some kid that he's going to come in there and start all four years and whatnot and be the best player to ever go through that program. That's just not what it was for me. It was more so like, oh, you can really play basketball. We want you out of our program and we want to see what you can bring to the table. So you're still going to have to prove yourself and you're going to have to go in there and show them what you can do. For me, the goal was always to go to the NBA. That was always the goal. And that, if that is your goal, I think that you should keep pursuing that. You should never stop. All right. Never always chase your dreams. If that's what you want to do, do it. But just understand that going Division Three or even going JUCO or Division Two, if it that doesn't mean that you can't go to the NBA or you can't reach your goals. All right. It does not it's not even a step back. Like, you know what I mean? I think a lot of kids think that going D three is a setback or it's a fate. No, it's not a setback at all. That's actually a stepping stone. That's actually a step forward. It's a step higher than what you were doing before. So you that's a good opportunity. You should always take that opportunity. When I realized I really loved basketball, the idea of going Division Three did not bother me anymore. You know what I mean? Because I stopped doing, I stopped playing basketball for clout. Like I stopped caring about, oh, if I go D1, if I don't go D1, I'm a bust. Like, oh, forget all that, okay? Because if you love basketball, you're going to go anywhere to play. And it turned in from, oh, me going D1, having to go to the NBA, to just being, yo, if I make money doing this, this is just me, by the way. It's <laughs> just, just me. If I make money hooping, doing what I love to do, that's a dream that so many people wish they could have, that they could do, you know what I mean? And that's what my mind had turned into, and that's when I started making heavy improvements in my game. i say the reason why I wasn't Division One ready, which could be a whole different video, or Division Two ready, out of high school, which, you know, Looking back, I thought I was for sure. I'd say it's all about the position that you're put in. And I was in high school during a very weird time, COVID time. So it was a very weird, you know, weird time in general. It's a weird time. But that's going to be a whole different video. I'm not even going to go into why I wasn't a Division One player or why I wasn't, a, you know, whatever. I didn't actually end up going Division Three. I ended up going Division Two. That's a goal at the end of the day, to earn a Division One scholarship. But just earning a scholarship in general was always a blessing. And people can't forget that. So how good do you have to be to play Division Three basketball? You can be very good, or you can be kind of mid, being truthfully speaking. Like, you can be kind of mid. Because there's, there's people on a D1 level that are very good, and there's people on D1 level that are very mid. Like, somebody watching this video, if you're not Division One, you're probably better than somebody who is Division One, And that's not even an exaggeration. I'm not saying that to knock them, but I'm saying that because it's the truth. There's hoopers everywhere. It's all about what a college coach needs and what the team needs. So if you fit their needs, then you are suited to play at that division, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? So I stopped thinking so much, oh, I didn't get a Division One scholarship, so I'm not good enough to play Division One basketball. That's not true at all. You might very well be very good, and you might be better than Division One players. But the opportunity, the, the, the opening on that team, like what the team needs, it doesn't suit the player you are. And maybe you weren't seen enough, you know what I mean? So just getting seen is what's really important. So you get seen. There's a, there's a bunch of schools out there. There's schools that need players all over. There's spots, not for everybody, but there's a lot of spots out here. More than people think, you know what I mean? Because you're always told that there aren't a lot of spots out there and there's um, not room for everybody, which is true. But at the same time, when you're given the opportunity to be seen in front of coaches and whatnot, there's room for you. There's room for you somewhere. If you take this serious enough and you put the work in, there's room for you. Um, and the end goal should be to make money playing basketball. So if going pro is your goal, going D3 doesn't stop that. Going D3 doesn't stop you from going to the NBA. Going D3 definitely doesn't stop you from going overseas. There's a bunch of um, NBA players that have played Division Three basketball. There's NBA players that play JUCO basketball. There's a common misconception with this Division Three and JUCO basketball. And that it all needs to end because there's hoopers everywhere. And 
those that do go D3 need to stop shaming those that go Division... Wait, D3. Those that go Division 1 need to stop shaming those that go D3. Because they'll get humbled. You know what I mean? And if you're watching this video, I thank you for tapping in. There's going to be more videos like this for sure. We reached 1,000 subs. We're at 1.3K. And thank you guys so much for all the love and support that you guys have been showing. I have 100K on TikTok. About 100K. I'm close to it. And... With TikTok saying they're going to get banned soon, possibly the rumors are in the air, you know, I don't want to even risk it. So I'm going to start my YouTube career now and I'm going to really try pushing out content and hopefully you guys gain something from what it is I'm sharing with you guys. I'm very excited. Uh, I got some big things planned for sure. It's, I know there's a lot that I can bring to the table. Make sure you like, you comment, subscribe, share this with a friend. It's your boy Reese1K and we out.